Hey guys, we are back working on our 2016 Polaris Ranger XP900 and today we are going to be replacing a faulty fuel pump. Stay tuned. So the issue I'm having is when I come in in the morning and I start the Ranger I have good crank but no start. Every once in a while it will start, idle rough, and then eventually die out, leading back to the same results of crank but no start. So on Amazon I was able to pick up a fuel pump for around $90, I will link that in the description. So this particular fuel pump assembly did come with a new nut for the fuel pump as well as the rubber o-ring. So to begin the removal of the fuel pump, the first thing we have to do is remove the driver's seat. Once the driver's seat's removed, you can remove the passenger seat. With both seats removed, we can now remove the bin that was under the driver's seat. Now using a T40 Torx bit, I'll remove the four screws that are holding in the center bin. We will not be removing the bin. With the four screws removed from the center bin here, we won't have to remove the entire bin. Just being able to pick this up and move it around should be enough to get the fuel pump taken out. And now we have access to our fuel tank as well as fuel pump. Now as you can see the area underneath the seat here up on top of the fuel tank doesn't get a whole lot of tension when it comes to washing so I'm just going to come through here I have an air hose you can either wash this clean this brush this off just to get it nice and clean so nothing's going to fall down into the gas tank. Okay, now that I have a clean working area, I can go ahead and unplug the power that goes to the fuel pump. To remove the power to the fuel pump, while pulling up on this tab, at the same time you can pull out on the plug to remove it. To remove the fuel line going to the pump, it's just a matter of releasing the two green tabs and pulling that clip backwards. Once the two tabs are released, you can come to the back of the connector and you can pull the connector all the way back. Once the connector is at this point, you can pull up on the entire tab to release it from the pump. Once all the connections to the pump are removed, at this point you can remove the retaining nut that is holding the fuel pump to the gas tank. Take note of which direction these connections are facing so that we replace the new fuel pump in the same positioning. So in my case, this nut is on there super tight, so I'm just going to use a channel lock that I have to help to get this nut loose. Now that the nut is loose, I can just come back and remove it by hand. The fuel pump does have a spring tension on it, so just pushing down on the fuel pump, you can lift up on the nut to remove it. Now we can remove the fuel pump, making sure that we also take the rubber o-ring. This fuel pump will have to tip out due to the fact that there's a filter and a float coming out with it. With the pump removed, now is a good time to inspect the inside of your fuel tank just to make sure that there is no debris in there that you need to clean out. With my new fuel pump, I will first add my rubber o-ring. With the o-ring installed, I can now install the fuel pump into the fuel tank. With the fuel pump in the tank, I will turn this to be in the same direction as the previous pump was installed. And while pushing down on the pump to depress the springs, I will install the nut. While I'm tightening the nut, I'm making sure that the fuel pump doesn't rotate one way or the other.
Now that the plastic nut is on tight, I will install my power and fuel. To install the fuel on, it's as simple as pushing down all the way till it snaps and then pushing in the green connectors that holds it in place. As for the power connector, just push it in place until it snaps in. Now that I have the new pump completely installed, I'm just going to come back with a rag and clean up any gas that spilled along the way. Okay, now to test the pump, the first thing I'm going to do is turn the key on and off and let the fuel pump cycle three to four times completely before attempting to start the machine. And the first time that I turned the key on, I did hear a bunch of air purging out. Second time around, I don't hear any air. I'll do this one more time. Now that all the air has been purged out of the fuel pump, we can go ahead and start up the Ranger. And there we go, the fuel pump seems to be working just fine. Now that we have everything working again, now we can replace the four bolts that are holding in the center tray. Just getting those good and snug, make sure you don't over tighten those. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and replace the driver's side bin. And next, the driver's side seat. And finally, the passenger seat. There we go. Alright guys, there you have it. That's how we replace the fuel pump in a 2016 Polaris Ranger XP900. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.